So, for those of you who've heard of Pensacola but have no idea exactly what's there, as I didn't until I went on a press trip there, I want to introduce Carrie Post, who's the Deputy Florida Secretary of State, and Katie Cole, who's the Director of Marketing from the Florida Department of State, and she uh, is one of the people who took us around. So, welcome to our show, ladies. Thank you so much. We're happy to be here. Thank you, Anita. We're delighted to be here. Well, we're so happy that you could do that, and I don't even know where to start when we talk there, uh, talk about it, except that one thing that my husband was very strong on because he was in World War II and he was a, but he was in the Air Force, um, we had to go to the Naval Museum. Yes, the National Naval Aviation Museum is incredibly impressive. It's on the, the Pensacola, the Naval Air Station. Um, it's one thing that it's always amazes me is it's a free museum and the experience is incredible from all the planes, all the different planes, from the flight simulators, from just so much education and history that's there in Pensacola. I'm, I'm not surprised your, your husband and you were fascinated with it. It is an incredible place. It is. And they just recently, we had the opportunity to tour one of their most, uh, the newest exhibits that opened up, the newest exhibit halls that is also just incredible. And they have plans to opening a third. And really, you've got to, as you, as you can account for, Anita, you have to be there to experience the magnitude. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of planes in a building over your head as you're walking through. It's just an incredible place to visit. And not to mention it's the home of the Blue Angels. And so, I mean, you really, when you see those jets, I mean, much less, not just even, you know, when you see them do flyovers, which they do, I think like it's it's seasonal. I want to say it's like every Wednesday they do a lot of test runs. But when you get to see the planes up close in the museum, it is just incredible. The Blue Angels are just amazing. But the entire, you know, museum experience there really is first rate. But I think, Katie, I actually went in a simulator, didn't I, of the Blue Angels? Yeah, you did. I did not go in the simulator. I thought I was going to get seasick. I you don't. went in the simulator, and I think everyone that went in it had um, had a lot of fun. And that, too, I think it's free for people to go in yeah. and experience. It's incredible. It really was great. And, and, of course, we were kidding before we got on the air about the grits. Well, you do have great restaurants there, I must say. And I, from the minute I set foot, in Pensacola, everyone said, we have to taste the grits, you have to taste the grits. Well, for me, you know, I'm here in South Florida, it isn't grits. It's like, um, I said, okay, well, I have cream of wheat. No, 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 it's not that. So <laughs> I guess why don't you all talk about the kinds of food that people will find in Pensacola? I would say really all of Northwest Florida offers really unique and delicious culinary options from Tallahassee all the way over to Pensacola. Obviously, grits are a popular item on the menu, um, and we incorporate a lot of our fresh seafood into a lot of our recipes. So what you see shrimp and grits on the menu, and, and um, so a southern twist on, on seafood. Another popular item um, that you can find in this area that's, that's unique to, our, to northwest Florida is the oysters, Apalachicola oysters, um, that are also delicious, and a lot of times will have a, a southern flair to them, but um, I think in particular the grits that you were mentioning are grits that we tried at Jackson Steakhouse, which is located um, in downtown Pensacola. It was delicious, and it's a part of um, what their chef there, Chef Herb, is part of the Celebrity Chef program um, that Pensacola developed, and the food there is just spectacular, um, and their grits in particular were delicious. That's true, and yes, Jackson's was quite a place, and, and I... I thought it was appropriate name since it's across that amazing park, that huge park where Jackson, President Jackson, I guess you named it after after him, but he's important to us down there, right? Absolutely. Um, yes, Pensacola takes their history very seriously, um, and they incorporate it, as you can see, in their restaurants and in their museums and in their entire experience. And so... Um, the experience in Pensacola is fun, but you also learn a lot while you're while you're there in that area. Well, the museum that really took me, uh, I, I couldn't believe that museum that had that special um, place where 
your, uh, I guess, all the Coca-Cola bottles. I mean, what was the name of that museum? Oh, the T.T. Wentworth um, oh, yeah. Junior Florida State Museum. Yes, that is a, a wonderful museum that is located right, actually right next to Jackson's, right across the square from the restaurant, but in downtown Pensacola. And um, the main floor talks a lot about um, the, the Tristan de Luna shipwreck, which is right off the shore of Pensacola. It's one of the oldest shipwrecks in Florida, or the oldest shipwreck in Florida. And um, it has a, an anchor that they pulled from that site, as well as this very tiny little replica of uh, um, a wood carving of a ship, which is what they used to determine that it was actually part of Tristan de Luna's um, fleet, which is pretty amazing. And then on the second and third floors, they have this very um, unique collection of Coca-Cola bottles and hunting gear. And, I mean, you name it, it's very Florida um, and, and just unique collections from all over the state. Well, I, Carrie, I have to – well, let me just tell everybody again because I want to talk to you about something. So, Carrie – Post is the Deputy Florida Secretary of State, and Katie Cole is the Director of Marketing, Florida Department of State. So, Kate, Carrie, you can see we had four days of of Katie. Can you imagine that her enthusiasm? I mean, it was like everything she talked about we loved. Well, I know you had fun, and I know she took you to some great places because Katie knows the, the places to go that are really cool. So let's say, Carrie, that you went to a conference and they said, well, where are you from? You said Florida and you're the deputy secretary. Say, well, what's Pensacola? So what's so great about Pensacola? What would you say? I would say um, it it kind of, in a sense, has it all. It has incredible beaches. Um, The sand there is the super sugar white quartz sand. The sand is incredible. The beach, which, of course, is always wonderful. And you couple that with it is an, one of the, the most historic cities in the nation, truly, not just from Florida. I mean, it's truly one of the – it's right up there with St. Augustine as far as being a historic city, but truly in the nation. I mean, it is, it is a hugely historic city. So you kind of have it all. You have the wonderful beaches, but yet it's so rich in history and the story there. I love stories. And that's what I like to hear about people and, you know, and I love to eat and, you know, the food as well, all the stories you've got with farm to table, um, you know, that that's also Pensacola is known for their culinary, that they do a lot of farm to table stuff. So I just think between the, the beaches, the history, the art and culture, um, that it, it's kind of just a, 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 a great place to spend either a long weekend or four days. <laughs> Absolutely. And as my husband actually, Bill, is – has been a developer and seaside we visited many years ago because it was something unique and we went back of course on this tour and i mean it has blossomed i mean all those seaside communities that you have people ought to go there even if they just spend a weekend they can rent a bed and breakfast or they can just spend a couple of weeks there that's you know that's made you really unique i think It truly is, and and this part of Florida really is very special. Um, I'm a second-generation native Floridian, um, basically grew up in central Florida and moved up here to to Tallahassee about 16 years ago and have spent a good, a lot of time exploring northwest Florida, and I just love it because it's still Florida, but it's still very unique. I mean, you have these charming coastal communities, like you said, Seaside or Grayton Beach, you know, or Rosemary Beach, that there's this, like, this chain of pearls of these great communities, like you said, that you can get a little bungalow or a B&B, you know, or a beach cottage, and it's just, I mean, if you don't have the big condos, you really feel like you can connect with the area, so I agree with you. I think that it's, that more people should come up and, and see what this part of the state has to offer. Right, and of course, we were there during Halloween, (laughs) <laughs> and nothing would do, but they insisted that we go to this spooky lighthouse. Now, lighthouses. Okay, this is your turn now, uh, Katie. Lighthouses. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, lighthouses, you know, all of northwest Florida, we have, um, I believe, and there's four or five lighthouses in the area. The one that we particularly in, um, visited was the Pensacola Lighthouse and Museum, which is also located on the Navy base. It's right down from the Naval Aviation Museum, um, across from a fort. So there's a lot that you can do in that really kind of small area. You could have a few things. 
And what's unique about the Pensacola Lighthouse and Museum, you can tour it during the day um, and climb up to the top and have a beautiful view. Or if you wanted kind of a more different, unique experience in the evenings, they do, and it's during Halloween, but it's also year-round you can arrange this. They do ghost tours because they claim that the, the lighthouse is haunted. And so these ghost tours, they, they take you around the lighthouse and tell you stories of, of the people that lived there and the kind of experiences that um, these, these lighthouse keepers have had uh, with these, these spirits, as, as they call them. And then you travel up, you climb to the top, and again, an, another gorgeous, beautiful view. But it's a really kind of unique way to look at some of the maritime heritage in Florida because there is a lot of history there um, in our lighthouses. Uh, they've been there a long time. And so I love that Pensacola has done this kind of unique nighttime experience for those that are looking to, to chase some chase some. Ghosts. Chase some ghosts. Uh, and the other, of course, um, and I, I don't, I almost want to leave it for the end in a sense. I love to cook and I love, I love the cooking shows. But you took us on something I wasn't prepared for, this amazing, gorgeous kitchen uh, where we had a real expert culinary chef do a whole lunch for us. Now, that place I would be buying, if I were there now, I'd buy all my Christmas presents there. <laughs> yes. It was incredible, and um, it is it's, uh, on top of So Bodacious Brewery, which is a, um, a coffee house down in, in downtown Pensacola, over by Jackson's, and kind of every, if you're kind of visualizing it, it's next to Jackson's, T.C. Wentworth, um, again, very walkable, historic downtown village as well, and um, they have opened up a cooking store and also a, a cooking area where you can learn to cook um, right above the brewery and a salad shop. And these owners, they've actually bought the entire block in Pensacola, and they've opened up a coffee shop and, a, um, and this cooking shop, and they've opened up an oil store, and they have a salad shop house. And um, the cooking experience, it is so fun and unique. You can do it with just some girlfriends, or you could do it with family members, or you could do it by yourself. And I think they do special classes, or you could arrange for a private class. And they go up, and, and ours featured, of course, locally um, sourced seafood. And so we, we made a delicious grouper, grouper dish, or they actually taught us how to make a delicious grouper dish that was caught um, that morning, like right from the Gulf, right there and off of Pensacola Bay. But that was a really cool, unique experience for people that are into food and are into Florida seafood. Um, that was that was a great a great spot. And I, I don't want to embarrass you, Carrie, but have you been there? I have not. <laughs> I have, but now I'm next time I'm in Pensacola. It's going to be a must visit site. I can tell you that because yes. Katie came back from the trip raving about it. I'm very familiar with Pensacola. I don't get over there as often as I could. I'm there, you know, maybe, you know, once or twice a year. But um, based on what she said, you can bet and now listening to you. <laughs> yes. And I'll give Carrie the benefit of the doubt here. They've only opened about six months ago, so they are brand new um, in Pensacola, and it's it's just wonderful. Right on top of So Bodacious Brewery, the coffee shop. Yeah, what a name. That's the other thing. But the thing that when you, you worked on this pretty fast, though, Katie, I have to tell you, when you talked about the oils and the vinegars, I have never seen a place where they have, it's like a, you'd think it was a coffee machine, but there are maybe 12 um, those machines or just canisters, and they have every kind of an oil, but with all sorts of herbs in it, and it's the same thing with the uh, with the vinegars. I mean, I never saw anything like that. Of course, if we were traveling or I would have gotten some of those bottles of that I, um, I mean, that's very sophisticated to have. I, I, forgive me. Pensacola to me was not a place that was sophisticated. So now my whole mind has changed. Good. It is. It's <laughs> it wonderful. Is. And what I love about Pensacola also is that people that are, you know, third and fourth generation Pensacolians have come back to their community and they've reinvested in it and, um, and they've really made it this, as you said, a sophisticated community. It's, it's wonderful, but they're still, um, the history is important to them, and so they're embracing their, their cultural heritage, and they're doing just a fantastic job at, at that. 
Right. And, of course, and you keep talking about history. You do – you have a lot of history there. Um, I mean, you're trying to make everyone appreciate what it was like there before, um, you know, and you're having a lot of school children go through everything. So I think it's important that you have such a good um, – well, I guess such an organization – that is really featuring things like this because the children are the ones, if you can attract them and they're happy there, they're going to stay. They won't move away after college. Mm-hmm. That's Absolutely, what, yeah, yes. You're doing that. Um, the, another thing that we actually didn't get a chance to go there, but I think we, we drove by it, but I did some research on online, uh, were the what you call coastal dune lakes, and they're rare. They're ex- Extremely rare. Um, this is one where I can, this is Carrie, and I can actually say I had the benefit of um, paddling them, stand-up paddleboard, um, as well as kayak. They're only known typically or found in three or four places on the planet. And it is incredible. It's kind of like they have these little, you know, you have the dunes that basically are sand dunes that look like white mountains, you know, with sea oats growing on them. But yet you have these pools of water that are like blue, light blue like sapphires or jewel-like almost. They're so blue. Right. And um, that you you paddle them, and it's just they're really rare. It's, it's a really incredible experience to do that. Yeah, I was... Uh... Um, I was impressed when I saw all that online. And, uh, by the way, you do have a great website. I don't know who's in charge of that, but uh, people can go to find out all about Pensacola. Um, and, and so for those of you who are listening, the way that you can get more information is to go to Viva Florida, and uh, then you'll be able to move with that. And then you have something that's called it's hashtag discover NW Florida, right? Yes, it's um, hashtag discover NWSL for Northwest Florida. And that is a campaign um, that we have launched here at the Florida Department of State to encourage our social media followers and users to share um, new discoveries and things that they are experiencing in Northwest Florida by posting a picture and, and tagging that hashtag so people can search and look at, um, at all the really unique and interesting things there are to discover in all of northwest florida that um, ranges from pensacola all the way over to tallahassee and of course you have forts there (laughs) and we went to fort pickens and we saw the big cannons it really amazes me how anybody i mean how many men did it take to fire a cannon that size i know you know, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, Anita. Uh, I wish I did, but yes, the fort is just beautiful. It's surrounded completely by water, um, and really the drive to the fort is spectacular. It's all protected land, so there's no development, um, and it's about a 10 mile drive to it, um, with, with no buildings. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Something that's unique to people that have visited Florida that is rare to see a stretch of beach that long, and the fort itself is, is is particularly impressive and beautiful, and you can take wonderful tours there. They provide free tours all day long, um, or you can just kind of walk around and do a self-guided tour. And then there's also the fort that is um, that is on the base as well. So there's two forts in Pensacola that are, that are really great experiences. And children love forts, you know, because they have all these things in their mind. And you had a you had very good volunteer there. I'm sure you have other volunteers, but when we were there, I mean, he was so enthusiastic. We needed eight hours to go through with him. He was uh, he, every little rock, every little thing he was going through. So that that was um, that's that's good to have those seniors who are now retired and they're working for you. Do you have some Absolutely. sort of a volunteer? He did a wonderful job, and he was definitely very enthusiastic and. Um, and excited to, to share with us about about the fort. Right, and so um, so both of are you both of you actually from Pensacola? Um, no, we're actually based in Tallahassee. The Florida Department of State is based in, in oh, Tallahassee. Oh, that's right, of course. So, um, oh. We you know we have this Discover Northwest Florida campaign, as I've mentioned before, that encompasses the entire Pensacola to Tallahassee area. And in looking at that, without having to drive you guys all over northwest Florida, we chose Pensacola as our spot to take um, the media to because of the concentration of historic sites 
delicious restaurants and um, maritime heritage museums, gardens and parks in that particular area. So that's kind of how we how we base based our decision off of for that. Well, I have to, Carrie, I have to compliment uh, you for uh, for I guess I don't know if you hire um, you hire Katie and her yes, associate. Yes, did. <laughs> okay. However, however it happened, but you really chose very well. We've been on a lot of press trips, and and um, they really. <laughs> They outdid themselves, and they were always there for us. They they were really terrific. They were having as much fun as we were while we were seeing things, and and so I really appreciated that very much. Um, you know, when you talk about Tallahassee, that's another beautiful. Now, I don't know a lot about Tallahassee, although I've been there for <clears throat> various things, but I would think that whole area would make a wonderful trip. Yes, Tallahassee is also a very um, wonderful historic city, um, and it's a great, great place for families, for seniors, for multi-generational ships, um, couples. I mean, you name it. We have a few sites in particular that I can I can talk to. Um, one is the Mission San Luis, which is a 17th century recreated Spanish mission that is located right here in Tallahassee. It's the only recreated Spanish mission in the southeast. Um, and it's just incredible to see. It's beautiful. It's located right um, right down from downtown Tallahassee, um, over by Florida State's campus. Um, another important museum that is located in Tallahassee is the Museum of Florida History, which is the state museum that houses um, incredible artifacts and tells um, about the history of Florida from early inhabitants, the Native Americans that first inhabited, inhabited here, all the way up to World War II. Um, we actually have a special exhibit going on right now at the Museum of Florida History that is focusing on the civil rights movement from a statewide perspective. Um, and this year, in 2014, we are commemorating the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act. So that's why they they brought this exhibit to us, and it's incredible. It's, it's a beautiful exhibit, and the museum itself is a, is a wonderful place to visit. Well, you sound very proud of all that. One thing I think we did forget, and I didn't want to do that, was the Pensacola Historic Village. And that yes. that really is amazing that you were able to do that. And it was loaded with school children when we were, when we were there. That really takes you back to the way people lived. It is. Um, it is. And really what I was just so amazed with is that they began putting the Historic Village together in the 60s so that they had the foresight then to bring together all of these historic buildings to one area where people could go and actually see a recreated um, village. And they do have a lot of school groups that go through there, but I think that's something of all, people of all ages can enjoy. It's a really unique place. And, again, what I love about Pensacola is that everything is, seems to be located downtown, and so it's walkable. The water's right there, so you have beautiful views, and um, and you just learn so much. But you're having so much fun, you don't realize that you're learning. So, it's um, the historic village is a is a great place. Yeah, because people don't realize what it took to take and take a an old house and move it. I hate to think of the traffic. I mean, you get these big trucks, and I mean that's a very big. Uh, you know, enterprise to do that. It is. It's a big undertaking, for sure. Yeah, but that that is amazing. Now it's there for everyone to see, and and people just can't believe. You know, they complain about some of the size of their apartments, and, you know, they're like, you know, these apartments might be 1,500 square feet. Well, gee, look at the way people lived before. I know. I so, know. It's incredible. It's good for the children to see that. Yeah. And, you know, everyone can get online and see things, but there's nothing like walking through one of these places and seeing the way they lived in the kitchens and the, you know, the little bathrooms and the outhouses. And, and uh, it was, and of course, then we did go into that big house. Remember that? Who, who did okay. that belong to again? I forget. You know, Anita, I do not remember who that belonged to. The only thing I keep thinking about is that, they decorated, this is maybe a little morbid, but they a lot of the decorations in the home, um, the wall decorations, they would take from their ancestors' hair, hair. that had I knew passed I, along. I, I, and there's these beautiful pieces of artwork. And then when you right. look closely, you're like, oh, right. my gosh, that right. is hair. That's and true. I, I just can't forget. <laughs> I can't stop remembering that. But no, anyway. it's, that's what I remembered. And isn't that strange? And it was all over the home. And it's, they're beautiful pieces of art. 
And when they told us it was hair, I think we all, our jaws <laughs> dropped. But So I can't even remember the, the woman's name, I'm embarrassed to say. No, and I don't remember, but she was, wasn't her husband a... Uh... Uh, a big, um, let's see, uh, a timber builder. And- yeah, timber, exactly, yes. in timber. And then, and so she lived in this very fancy home. I mean, it was big. It was a beautiful and, home. It yeah. was a beautiful home. And I loved it because they had, um, they had found pictures from all of their ancestors, and they were all in the, in the, um, over the house. So you could actually see the people that lived there. I always like to put a face with, with sure. the home that I'm in, and so that was interesting as well. Sure. Well, I want everyone to know this has um, been an extraordinary interview with people who, uh, well, of course, one woman whom we spent four days or more with, Katie Cole, Director of Marketing for the Florida Department of State, and Carrie Post, who's the Deputy Florida Secretary of State. And if you want to go to their website, it's vivaflorida.org. Viva, like live, V-I-V-A, vivaflorida.org. And you can also go and you can um, you can go and visit if you really want to because um, this is a place that that it's out of the way in a sense, but it's not really. Once you get up, you drive up. Let's see if we were driving from South Florida. I'm trying to remember how what how what we would do. I guess we take the turnpike maybe up there, or would we take I-95? I don't really remember. Turnpike to, to take it up to 75, and then when you hit I-10. And just keep heading, keep heading west. So hang <laughs> left. <laughs> and something you said very quickly is uh, the beaches. Now, of course, we have we have so much beach da- down here in South Florida. But saying that, it is a different beach on the it, west exactly. coast. Exactly, it is a very different beach. <laughs> yeah, the shells are different. The white beaches are different. It's like it's really the Gulf of Mexico. So it's not as rough. But it was great, and I have to thank both of you so much. It's a great interview, and I appreciate everything you did for us as um, media people. Thanks again. Absolutely. Anita, great- thank you so much, and please tell Bill we said hello. I will. <laughs> okay. All right. All thank right. you. Uh-huh. Thanks so much, Anita. Really right. appreciate it. I loved it. Bye. Holiday, okay. Same to you. Bye.